Welcome to Intuitive Connections, where spirituality and psychology meet to help you be your best and brightest self. I'm your host, Victoria Shaw, and in each episode, I'll help you to awaken your own inner wisdom, step into your power, and live a more divinely inspired life. You're here to let your inner light shine. Are you ready? Let's do this. So hello and welcome to Intuitive Connection. I'm so excited today because we have back a guest that joined us very, 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 very early in the show who I just love, love, love to connect to. And um, I'm so excited to have him back again, to share him again with you in case you missed that earlier episode. Mark Youngblood. Mark, welcome. Hi, it's so good to be back, Victoria. I've been looking forward to this for several weeks now. Oh, this makes my day. And I feel the same way about talking about you. Well, talking about you, but also talking <laughs> with you. Yeah, this is this is how sleep deprivation goes. No, I'm so excited. I'm going to like read your bio because that's going to just help me stay awake. Uh, so Mark is the founder and CEO. And if any of this changed, you'll correct me. But he's the founder and CEO of Inner Mastery Inc. And the creator of the Pathway to Radiant Spiritual Development development programs, and the Inner Mastery Methodology for Personal Transformation. Did I get it right? Yep. Yahoo. You nailed it. All right. And today, Mark is here to talk to us about spiritual growth and development, but particularly what it means to have a dark night of the soul and how do we navigate when these spiritual kind of, they feel a little bit like crises are happening so that we can move through them with ease, Mm. joy, and grace. Mm. So, yeah. And I think that this is a topic too. I mean, it came to me for personal reasons, but also because I feel like energies are really activated right now. And a lot of people are going through some intense stuff. And so I just thought this was such a timely topic. And I know you are the guy to teach us about it. Uh, see, well, let's explore it together and see what comes out. That's that's one of the things I love about you is the the sort of back and forth we get going in these conversations. I'm always down with that. So talk to me though. Talk to me about your work and what it means to you when you talk about that kind of transformation and the dark night of the soul. Yeah. So, you know, I think it is really essential that we understand these transitional periods. Uh, and I do agree with you that we're individually and collectively going through dark nights. Uh, and so you know, I think it really helps us to have a sense of what does an evolutionary journey look like. And I've done quite a bit of research into people who've written books on those topics and uh, and done my own meditations on it. And I came up with a model I call the pathway to radiance. Any model is not accurate, right? However, it's useful. And so it's it can be helpful to know that what I'm experiencing is normal and it places me Uh, in a particular stage in my journey that gives me guidance on what's the best thing I can do to support my journey where I am today. And so um, this model includes between each of the major phases of our evolution a dark night. And so there are multiple dark nights. And you and I both know that those are the big dark nights. Those are the big transformational shifts. But we have little ones. We have small dark nights. And and why don't you and I explore what that means real quickly here? And I might pass it over to you. And when you think of a dark night, you know, what is it to you? How would you characterize it? I think, I mean, it can mean a lot of different things. And again, not everyone's maybe familiar with that term. But for me and my experience, it's those times when you're stretching, you're growing, and it's maybe because it's getting a little uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think too, it's times when we have these big challenges. I mean, it can be, I think the big ones can sometimes be where it feels like everything's falling apart. Yes. And it's almost, you know, it reminds me of, and and I have an interesting relationship with this uh, and I've blogged on it, but the tower card and the tarot. To mm-hmm. me, that's the dark night of the soul card. That's, you know, when it's all going down. And, you know, sometimes we get, you know, the death card, which is a softer one. It's all going down, but it's all nice and we're transforming. And then sometimes you get the tower card, which is like, it's going down and it might be a little bit jarring to you, my friend. Uh, But again, it's going down so that you can build something new. Mm. Yes. You know, so the dark night is, think about a baby. Okay. So a baby's floating along in the mother's womb and it's heavenly and warm and cozy and being fed and and all the world is great. And then all of a sudden these pressures start 
and it starts feeling like I'm being squished mm. to death and I'm going through this little tunnel and I'm dying, I'm dying and oh my God, I'm born into this place that's so bright and noisy and terrible and wet and uh. Well, that's a dark night. Got it. Okay. So we're dying to one aspect of ourselves and being born into the next. And so it's, it's that chrysalis experience of going into the cocoon and then out of the cocoon again. And we're still there, but we're a greater expression of ourselves on the other side. I love that. And it's the shedding of our skin. It's the letting go. All those metaphors that we have, that's the dark night. And in the middle of it, it feels like something's wrong. Like, I thought I had it together. And all of a sudden, nothing's working. <laughs> right. I have health issues. I have relationship issues. Maybe money issues, job issues. Uh, things aren't working for me. It's stuff that I used to be easy. I'm getting triggered all the time. I'm finding myself either angry or crying or just all these kinds of reactions to uh, this transformation. And we call it a dark night because it feels like we're falling apart. Right. Does it have to be hard? Because... Mm. You know, what I keep hearing from my guides through my own experience as of late, but really with my clients and in general, is that it doesn't have to be hard, but it often is. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'd have to really parse through that because I would say that the more we understand what we're going through and the more we're able to not judge it, that we're able to flow with it and be in a state of acceptance then the more the gentler and more peaceful that experience will be for us. And if absent those things, that's what makes it hard. Because, you know, struggles are struggles. Right. You know, life is full of struggles. And if they're piled one on top of the other, it's just now a pile of struggles. It's the story we tell ourselves about those struggles and how we resist them and and go into fear that something must be wrong or I must be someone I didn't think I was anymore because I used to. I have heard so many people lately say to me, I feel like I'm going backwards. Right. Because as we get triggered, as we struggle, we, in my vernacular, go down the elevator. We leave the penthouse of our consciousness and we kind of devolve as we get triggered. Right. And it can feel like we're now doing what we did five years ago and thought we'd worked our way through. But that's just the emotional reaction to what's going on. Uh, you know, transitions are unavoidable. Right. And the letting go of who we were in order to become who we're destined to be is unavoidable. How would you characterize how we can make it gentler on ourselves? You know, I love what you said about that awareness. I love what you said about when you recognize, oh, this is happening for me, or oh, this is a transition, or I want to get this from the guides, or oh, you know, I can hold myself through it. I can love myself through it. I don't have to awfulize it. I don't have to personalize mm -hmm. it. And I don't have mm -hmm. to tell myself a story about how I'm a victim or my personal favorite <laughs> that goes through my mind is how I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> right. Because that's, you know, that's up until now been my little, yeah. my little trick. Right. And it's right. when we can start to release some of those things yeah. and just say, hey, life is getting lifey right now. It's getting lifey for your growth. And sometimes too, especially when you see a, a lot of loss, a lot of big transitions, a lot of things falling apart. Right. Sometimes those moments are golden because you're like, oh, I'm releasing things that I need to let go of. Because you usually are. You usually don't release things that you need. I've been told again and again by my guides, like you can't let go of something that's essential yeah. to you. And even yeah. if you do it, it will boomerang back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that that's a really key thing is that, that it feels terrible. And yet this is really a skyrocketing process. Right that through the dark night, we're releasing a ton of stuff that is shadow stuff. Right. Low vibrational frequencies, old wounding, old stories, maybe karma we brought with us, uh, and shedding that and moving into kind of a new normal that stabilizes for a while. And then we do our work at that level. And right. it's a different kind of work that we're able to access at that level than at the level below. Right, And then as we get to that point where it's transitioning again and we go through another major transition, we slough off a bunch more stuff. Right Now we are letting go of stuff in between, you know, when we're right. in the middle of a stage. And one of the things that makes the process gentler is if we're doing our work every day. And I call that eating the chocolate elephant. If we would just take a bite every day of use tools, whatever tools you have available to you, that when, when something comes up and you're made aware 
oh, this is old programming. This is old wounding. I don't have to hold on to this. I can release the emotional energy. I can clear the energy patterns. Uh, I can heal the wounding that occurred and just let that go permanently. When you hit that transition, there's a lot less stuff to work through. Right. And so that is one of the best ways to make it a gentler for you. And I think about it like a boiling pot. So the pot's sitting on the stove, not much is happening, you turn the heat up, and that's your frequency getting higher. And as the heat turns up, all the impurities in that water <laughs> boil to the top. All this foamy, ugly oh my stuff, God. okay? And that's as our vibration increases, to me, the story I say about this is that all the stuff that's inconsistent with that frequency that it's ready to let go comes out. It's, it's like it's pouring out of your pores and, and it's showing up in your reactivity and all that stuff in order for you to scoop it off and let that go. And you started us off going, I think this is something most of us can relate to. And I would echo that because I really believe all of humanity is going through a massive dark night right now. Yes. And the planet is too. Yeah. So uh, you saw me smiling like crazy when you were talking because I get that exact same metaphor with the boiling pot all the time. <laughs> so soulmate much. Oh my God. <laughs> like the exact same one. And I probably even talked about it on the show, but not as eloquently as you just did. Mm. But yeah, I get that same image. And I do think it's collective and individual right now. And you know, you're going to hit the waves at different times. Yeah. But I think that that's why we're seeing more apparent dysfunction right now on the planet because all that stuff is, all the impurities are coming up to the surface for us to clear. Yeah, that's right. And that's the gift. And it's right. not a gift if you don't have ways to process. Right. This is the reason I think it is vital that everyone have their own transformational toolkit, that you go learn from this teacher and from that teacher and from that teacher, and you, you pull together a coherent uh, toolkit that enables you to clean your energy, to be able to transform energy patterns, to be able to release old emotions, uh, to heal and let go of sort of schemas, and change your thoughts, to be able to rewire your thoughts. Right. All of these are part of that transformational journey. And you can go to other people for that. And I think the day has come where we have to democratize that process, that it's not going to someone special to get through a time that you get your own tools and you use those to help yourself along with your relationship with your soul, with your guides, right. to be able to process yourself through all these unavoidable transition points. You know what I tell people when they come to me or really go to anyone is again, but I always say this and I've said it a million times on this show, I'm sure my role is to give your guidance to you. My role is to reconnect you with your resources, with your wisdom, with your guidance, with your knowing. I'm the conduit for that, but I'm not the substitute for that. Perfect. And right. See, that's a true teacher. Right. Because the false teachers are be dependent on me. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And there's that normal part, you know, and I've been feeling that through my own little transition here. There's that normal part of us, that little hurting child that wants to cling or the little duckling that wants to imprint on anything, right? Even, <laughs> even a set of boots, yeah. if you know that particular story yeah. from intro psychology. But there's that part that wants the guru, that wants the teacher, that, you know, almost like wants to be like, please help me, save me and be really yeah. kind to that part of yourself because he or she is hurting. But also know that you can be the one to rescue, quote unquote, mm -hmm. and no rescuing is really needed, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to throw out a couple of transitions that are major transitions in the way I think about dark nights. Okay. Uh, because I think a lot of the people um, that we're talking to will go through these three transitions, maybe in this single lifetime. And, and the stage we're born into, I call the wounding stage, because okay. that's when we're taught we're not enough. That's when our young, evolving personality develops a story about self that is this flawed, undesirable self that we then live in a defensive, reactive structure of trying to protect it right. and amplify it and, uh, and glorify it. But there comes a point on our journey where the ways we're trying to cope with the world from that completely egoic perspective, they quit working. And for, I call it hitting bottom. 
Now, this is not a really painful thing for everybody. It is for a lot of people. It was certainly hard for me. And for me, it was the collapse of my first company, right with a divorce. And a lot of self-concept just shattered when that happened. And it cracked me open and soul came pouring in. And that brought me into the healing stage. And for other people, it could be an addiction, it could be a divorce, it could be getting fired, death, you know, a death of someone close to them, uh, a, a health scare. All these kinds of things can shock somebody into that sort of waking us. It looks like you want to say something. Is I it- have a question. Yeah. Do you think that we can have these shocks again and again and not wake up? Oh, you bet. Right. So it's a, it's a call to action. Yes. But it's not an inevitability, right? Yeah. You have to be in that place where you're ready. Okay. There's the crack. I see the light. I'm going yeah. for it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And so like I work with executive clients that, you know, my primary job is to be an executive coach with CEOs and people like that. And, you know, you hear stories about these type A personalities that are workaholics and they have a heart attack. And some of them go, what the hell have I been doing with my life? And they go do something else uh, that's more nourishing and more really attuned with their life purpose. And then there are those that go, I'm back in the saddle, and they're right back at it. And that's, I think, what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so for some people, and, and there's people in, in the community, in my online Facebook community, that have been in that hitting bottom during the time they've been in our group. And the things they talk about, the relationships that shatter, the you know, that sort of thing, letting go of really destructive, self-destructive habits and stuff like that. Then as you heal, you're still kind of in this drama place. You're still with those same relationships. But as you evolve, there comes a time when you outgrow it. And this is called letting go and moving on. Do you recall those times in your life where the relationships you have around you, the the way you organized your life and how you socialized and all that, it just didn't work anymore? Right. And your friends were going, what's wrong with you? Why'd you change? Go back to being the way you were. Yeah. There's all this (laughs) social pressure to stay small and to stay trapped in these unhealthy dances we do. Right. And sometimes it's internalized too. Sometimes, you know, because of the way your personality is structured, you learn that certain things aren't safe. So you're your own worst enemy in terms of those limits where you're like, wait, it's not safe to do that. Slow down. And so I think sometimes we have to look inside too and talk to those parts of ourselves that, you know, aren't ready to give us permission for the shift. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's exactly what we go. And so this, this can feel like dying because you have to choose to walk away from relationships that don't work. Right. You may have to quit your job. There's so many transitions that happen during this time. I think a lot, a lot, a lot of people are going through this stage yeah. right now where they've been doing a lot of work on themselves. Their vibration gets to a certain point and it's time to surround yourself with those people who have a vibration that matches you now. Right. And that's a new community. And I think, you know, the beautiful community you're building on Facebook, this is a haven for the people who are looking for those, you know, you get me, you, you know, I, right. I can talk to you and you understand and, and the things you say make so much sense to me and it feels like my spiritual home. And right. this is one of the things I'm so thrilled that you're offering out in the world. Uh, you know, not just the teaching, Likewise. <laughs> the stuff that you, that you give is that you're welcoming people who are ready to find a place. Because I think you and I both know that who we surround ourselves with has a lot to do with our frequency. Yes. And that if we're going to swim in heavy waters, it's going to be hard to keep our vibration high. And if we surround ourselves with people with higher vibration, that's going to help elevate us. Yeah. And I think it's also, it's definitely that, but I think it's also something that I've learned from making the move that I made across country is it's also sometimes just, you know, we have so many shoulds and so many, like, this is how it has to be. Mm -hmm. When we free ourselves up to start to follow our own natural inclinations too, you're going to attract people, experiences, places that vibe with you because it can be very different, right? lots of people are really drawn to the East Coast. And I loved living on the East Coast for all of my adult life up until now. But now I'm really having a totally different experience. I'm like, wow, you know, this area feels like more like my peeps than anywhere I've been in my life. Right. (laughs) So 
Sometimes yeah. it's that kind of match, yeah. right? It's that kind of puzzle piece. And it could change tomorrow. Right. I could be like, hey, I'm going to Hawaii or yes. I don't get locked into forevers anymore. But well, and see, that is really the recognition that it's all transition. Right. Some of it doesn't seem painful because it's right. smoother or gentler or nourishing in certain ways. But then, you know, spirit's not going to let us just coast. You know, once right. once we commit to our journey and we say yes and we wake up, spirit's going, oh, yummy. Yep. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the mind's going, wait, no, stop. Yeah, exactly. Like right. this. What were you thinking? Yeah. And I have a question on that. So I hope I'm not interrupting the flow, but you know, you talked about tool. I mean, there's so many tools, there's self-soothing tools and calming tools and self-talk tools, but the ones that I think that I would love more of are the tools of, you know, the mind mm-hmm. and sort of redirecting the thoughts. Yeah. I always feel like this question of, I want to be real and true with whatever's coming up. I don't want to whitewash. I don't want to push it out because pushing it out, it's still there. Uh, But I also don't want to get lost in it, which is sometimes still a factor for me when I'm really, really (laughs) vibing in my my junk. Mm -hmm. So what can you share some tools or some strategies for, you know, keeping things light and positive, maybe like redirecting the thoughts, but also yeah. allowing that, you know, whatever is there is fine. Does that make sense what I just said? Yeah. So you're not going to judge yourself for having the thoughts. Right. Okay. And, you know, I just want to talk a little bit about what you just introduced. And so there's one level which says, help me get myself out of this reaction and back up to my penthouse. So I restore myself. Okay. And okay. That's a set of tools and that's a calming, uh, redirecting your thoughts, all of that. What we want to do is go, where'd it come from? Okay. Where'd it come from? Because if I don't go get where it came from and transform that, it'll come back again and again. Right. Now, if if we're patient and we just uh, continue a process and not letting it run us over some lengthy period of time, that's the traditional historic way of doing it. But there's new tools and new technologies that are being channeled every day. And, and I have tools to just go clear it. You just go clear where that is, either in the mind or in the energy field that is giving rise to thoughts. And when that's cleared, then that triggers not there anymore. That conversation doesn't come up anymore. And each time you do that, you're restored to more and more peace because there's less and less of the egoic conversation to come up. And to honor what you said, because I, I do use the calming techniques. It's the first step. Right. Um, to be able to then access a deeper healing. One of the main ways I go about it, and I'll just offer this up and see what you think of it, is uh, I want us to remember that there's three selves. There is the true self, which is the observer. Okay. There is the adult ego. This is the prefrontal cortex. This is the objective, calm, uh, really rational, wise, loving, compassionate, high-functioning ego And then there's everything else, which is all of your subconscious, all of your learned programming. And you're not one person. When you look in the mirror, there's not just Mark. There's not just Victoria. There is hundreds and hundreds of us all in the same mental space. But there's only one part of you that can choose, and that's that adult ego. And then there's only one part that can give guidance, and that's the soul. Wow. Okay. And so... We act on self-management through the adult part of our ego. And we do that by going, I'm not the part reacting. I'm the part observing the part reacting. And that's called a disassociation. And if you can disassociate from that voice, from that anger, from that resentment, from that fear, and go, hi, sweetheart, I see you're scared. I see you're upset. Sit down with me and let me love you. And you just bring your compassionate, loving self to this part of you crying for help. And when it has been soothed, all of that reaction will just fall away. It's beautiful. And it's a beautiful, beautiful way to think about it. I haven't really thought of the way that you broke that down. So I am taking that in, as I'm sure many of our listeners are too. Is the spirit wise observer self also the part that, you know, informs the adult ego? Yeah. Beautiful. All right. So part of that realization is to me, the merge is when the soul comes through 
and it blends with that adult self and you can't tell them apart. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. And that's so, so helpful. Yeah. And it's the more to me, it's a natural process. The more we let go of the stuff that hooks us and the more that we consciously identify with who we truly are through affirmation, through prayer, you know, through the I am meditations. I have my own around that. And that we clear out that which brings us out of that uh, communion. The more of our time we stay in that sort of blended soul awareness. And that's the first thing I recognized about you was that your soul is so front and center with you. Aww. It just, you know, you shine with it. And your, your personality's there, but it's not a barrier to that soul. It is cooperating with the soul. You just made my day, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you just made my day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, um, I'm going to take that in for a minute because Lord knows I need it. But uh, <laughs> I also want to say, I, I kind of want to loop back to something that keeps coming up again and again and again. A lot of times when I'm doing work and you know I'm part counselor, part intuitive, part I don't know what else, whatever it wants to work through me yeah, finds right. a way. Uh, but in the counseling work particularly, but in the intuitive work too, sometimes someone will come to me and they'll be like, I dealt with my mother issues, right? <laughs> I dealt I dealt with this. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Like this has been done. And, you know, I always feel like it's like peeling an onion, right? You yes. have done it. But each time you get to a new level of awareness, sometimes yeah. there's like a little bit more to see and a little more there. And it's not a step back. It's actually a step forward. And it can even be a little easier the next time because you have now a broader awareness, right? right? So you're right. gonna you're gonna have a lot more tools to bring to the equation than maybe you did the first time you came before. So I'm curious what you think about that. Exactly what you said. Exactly. Yeah. And and we can't be upset because that's just the ego judging that I should be further along than I am. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's just another make wrong. We're making ourselves wrong for having more work to do. I love that term. And it is exactly that because we, I think about it sometimes like if you go to a cafeteria and they've got those stack of plates and you pull one out and then the next one rises to the surface. That's kind of what happens over time. Yeah. Right. We do clear a big chunk and we have this long period of spaciousness. Right. Where we're not, it's not showing up in our world, not showing up. And then boom, something happens and there's the next piece. Right. And, and it's about being able to really uh, keep healing until it truly, there's nothing left. But if someone's reacting, I don't want to talk about that anymore. There's something <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> yeah, usually, yeah, usually, yeah. And it's fine. When you're ready, as you're ready, how you're ready, it's all good. There's no forcing, pushing, and there's no, in my understanding, there's no getting it wrong. Yeah. You know, there's just varying levels of, of getting it right. Right, right. I'm going to tell a personal story that illustrates this point. As uh, I got divorced uh, over a decade ago, my son was 17. We were just so tight the whole time he's growing up, you know, just was there really hands on dad. And then when we got divorced, we became very distant. And that distance was so painful for me. And I had so much grief and I processed and processed and cleared. And, re you know, I, each time I think, Whew, okay, all right, I'm in good shape. Well, I was watching a show the other night where a, a doctor um, was distant from her daughter and was so wanting to connect with her daughter and uh, her daughter made this outreach, I burst into tears. Aww. And I went, what is that about? <laughs> and so I went, got closed my eyes, reflected, went down inside, and there was this other little well of grief of the deep loss of how close we once were. Right. And, it, you know, it, it's, it'll be different. It's not, we have a loving relationship. It's just distant. Right. And it's never going to be what it was. And there was still this part of me that hadn't healed that. It was still in my shadow. And it took seeing that on the television to trigger it so that it could come up to be let go of. You know, one of my teachers talks about an experience that she had in healing her own stuff and crying, like just a period of time where she was just crying all the time. And she said, like, my understanding and what my guide said is the crying made space for mm -hmm. more soul to come in, for more light for more spirit to come in. And I, I love thinking about it that way because we can think of ourselves as an endless project to fix. Guilty sometimes up until now. Um, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> but we're not, you're not, you're whole, you're complete, you're perfect. And, and the journey of life is supposed to be fun. I mean, yeah. supposed to be is not a word I normally use, but it's actually what the guides are saying. It, it can yeah. be fun. It can be joyful. Mm-hmm. Like only humans think that, you know, it has to be hard and hurty. Yeah. Um, and if it is love yourself, yeah. it's not a mistake. You're not bad or wrong. It's, yeah. it's just part and parcel of what you learned through yeah. being here, but, but it can be really, really, really joyous and fun. But and I'm getting this from the guides. The name of the game is not fixing, repairing. Yeah. Even the word healing, I think, and I love the word healing, but I also think it kind of conditions us to get back into this. Something's yeah. broken. I got to fix it. And you're not, yeah. right? You're not. It's about, we just let life in and, and we release more. And so for you seeing that movie and having that experience again, just reminded, you know, you, hey, human, yeah. you know, there's a little more in there. Or even I think sometimes, you know, certain things are just going to be in our energy space, maybe forever. It's not a big yeah. deal. It's just, you know, little energy pops. Yeah. And, and there's so much that I enjoyed about what you just said. And I want to draw a couple of things out um, because I, th- I think they were profound you know, this this idea that it's it's not about, you're not healing in order to be more perfect. You're healing, I love the way you said it, to create the space for more of your soul light to come in. Right. And I've talked about it in the past about like your, your soul's already there and we piled all this stuff on top of it and it's hiding the light. And it's, a, it's about pull the stuff off and let the light that's already there shine. But I don't know that I ever thought about it the way you phrased it. So that was really beautiful for me to to really think about creating this spaciousness. And so if unprocessed emotions are really heavy, you can think about it like a weight that's pulling our frequencies down. And and the more we raise our vibration, the bigger our antenna becomes. Think about it this way. So we all have the capacity to bring in divine guidance and to bring in those frequencies. But the heavier our frequency is, the smaller the antenna is until, you know, we get this one scratchy station that comes in every now and then and you get a word or two and then all of a sudden it comes in clear and now you're getting two channels or three channels and those aren't quite as clear, but then you do more work and all of a sudden now i got four channels. It's just, it's your capacity to bring in right. um, gets bigger and bigger and all that came to me listening to the way you phrased that. And you also illustrated another thing we can do in terms of our thoughts. And I want to share that. It's called a reframe. Because to go from something's wrong with me, I need to clear it out so I'm more perfect, to no, nothing is wrong with you. These things are just in the way of divine light coming in. Move it out of the way. Clear out some baggage for the divine light to come in and shine. Powerful reframe. Going from my life is falling apart, I'm going to die, it's the end of all things, to oh, it's a dark night. Right. And this is something to be celebrated. Look at all the changes I'm going through. That's a reframe. Right. And when we can shift our thinking to, could it mean something more powerful, more empowering, uh, more loving? That's another great way to help ourselves out of these old conversations. Yeah. And the other thing that comes through to share too with listeners, and I can't believe that we've been talking this long. Ah, I could go on forever, Mark. But the other thing that comes through to say too is you don't get brownie points for having it be hard. And I think a lot of us have that conditioning, right? You know, yeah. Hands are raised, two hands raised here. You can't see them. But but you don't. And so I think it's important to recognize that too, because I know I got that in there, right? I'm going to work. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to do it. And my my guides, my spirit are like, or you could just go like, you know, float on a raft on the beach. <laughs> um, you know, it doesn't have to be painful. Right. And again, for many of us, you know, suffering has been the way I believe up until now that humanity has been working and we are moving out of that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just important for listeners to understand it's not that you're wrong if you're having these experiences. You're not. You're human. Uh, But it's not a necessity anymore. And you're being called to release that as much as you're ready to do and find, you know, new ways of experiencing earth from joy, from ease, from grace, from purpose, from allowing. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, they're saying that it's, you know, I'm going to like muscle it out. It's got to be hard and and getting through it makes me good is that it comes from that not enough place, right? It comes from this idea that you weren't born divine, Mm -hmm. which you are and you are. Yes. Beautiful. Yay. Oh my God. This has been so much fun. I could talk to you forever. (laughs) Um, (laughs) 
<laughs> but oh my God, but we have to start winding down according to the time. Mark, what else? Burning stuff wants to come through on this topic before we start to wrap it up. Oh, I, I feel really complete. I, I feel like, you know, this has been rich. I love that last point you made. That's That's one I can take to heart. You know, there's plenty of times where I've made it harder than it has to be. And I really love the reminder of that. Thank you so much. Or just, I would even reframe, can I reframe that for you? Yeah, sure. You've allowed it to be harder than it needs yeah. to be. Or you've believed that it needs to be harder than it right. needs to be. That's even a better one, right? Because yeah, exactly. we get that, that I comes in there. I know she's been in my face too, <laughs> you know? And she's like, you're doing this, you're doing that. I'm yeah. like, no, sweetie, right. we're okay. We're, we're doing what we learned to do as we learn to do something else. Mm. Yeah, exactly. It's always such a pleasure. It so nourishes my soul to spend time with you. And I just want to thank you again for the invitation and the chance to chat with you today. Mark, I feel the same way. I know we'll be doing this again. And I'm just really glad to share with listeners, maybe newer listeners that didn't catch uh, Mark's earlier episode. You can listen to that one. It was during the lockdown and Wi-Fi was a little funky. I was just getting my uh, podcaster self together. So the sound quality is not the best that you're going to see on this show, but it's definitely worth a listen. Tell people where to find you and and some of your offerings so they can find you independent of me. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a link that you can post. And I have a private community called the Soul Side Community on Facebook that is free to join. And uh, you join through a free masterclass. And it's something I'm just launching this week. In fact, it's called the, and talk about timely, Soul Connection and Divine Guidance Yay. Masterclass. And so you, it's about eight lessons in this masterclass. And then you're able to join the Soul Side community to come talk about that and talk about, you know, the wonderful things you also talk about. Uh, in a victorious group. So I want to invite you to click that link and come check it out. Beautiful. And Mark has had a public group for a while, which I know he's transitioning, but I've been a part of that and it's such a great community. So I think this will be so lovely and so helpful for people as well. Thank you very much. So Mark, again, always a pleasure. This was so much fun. I think there's going to be so many nuggets for people that maybe are struggling a little bit right now and are feeling like hopeless or helpless or confused or overwhelmed or just just annoyed with the lifiness of life. So um, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing. Thank you everybody for tuning in and namaste. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you found joy, strength, inspiration, and clarity from today's episode. If you'd like to learn more and connect with an amazing group of like-minded souls, please join us over on Facebook in the Intuitive Connection Community Facebook group, where we explore these topics in deeper detail, have additional live teachings, and host Facebook Lives with our amazing guests. I hope to see you there. And of course, if you want to learn more about me or the work that I do, please check out my webpage, victoriashawintuitive.com. Thank you so much again and namaste.